Hello, my brethren, and welcome. The Neja changes happened yesterday, and we got a nice little surprise with it. To start off, Neja went from looking like he could walk into either restroom into... Well, this. The nice surprise was this Empyrean skin that came out, and I must say that it looks absolutely amazing. His bundle also came with a fantastic-looking Bujal Sandana, and a cool-looking Tang dagger skin that you still can't equip on Zaz, which means you'll almost never get to see it. He at least looks like he's part of the big boy club now, but does his changes actually take him off the hormonal therapy? Well, let's take a look and find out. First of all, his health went up from 225 to 375, and his shields went down from 225 to 150. And to me, this is a good change, because he nets more health gained than he does shields lost, and health is better than shields anyway. With his Firewalker, they change it from a channeling ability to duration-based, which I am all for. As they said as to why, is because you know, it being channeled, he could not uh, get any energy regeneration while it was active, so that alone is a good change. Another small change they made with it was that when he activates Firewalker, it does not restrict movement now. He has a cast animation for it now, which does a small hop. I have no reasoning for the hop, but it is there. With Blazing Chakram, the cast animation has been sped up, and it also no longer restricts movement when you cast it. Now enemies hit by the disc are marked for what they'll say is modable duration, and greatly increasing the damage they take from all sources, so not just Neja, and marked enemies have a chance to drop energy orbs. DE's reasoning for it is really just what I said, is that it gives energy, and being able to do more damage to enemies is just going to help the team in general. Killing enemies while they are marked will now produce healing orbs instead of the current healing pulse. DE's reasoning of why states the current radial heal is invisible and very small, usually only benefiting players in melee range. Most players don't even know it's there, which I totally agree with. Health orbs make the result more visible while introducing other mod synergies. This I can agree with as well because it's almost like Necros, that always leaving healing orbs that if you need some later on, your carrier can just suck them up. So it's just going to end up being better for people. So they also increase the number of targets the disc will try to hit before recalling and improve some cases of faulty lock-on targeting. And while I was playing around with this, yes, it does seem much better at actually tracking enemies, hitting them, and bouncing between them. They also added a charge throw, which causes the Chakram to go straight forward and back and dealing extra damage in its path. I think this is a nice little addition, like if you just want to be shooting down a hallway and just deal a lot of damage in a straight line. And one final feature they added for the Blazing Chakram was teleporting will no longer cancel Firewalker. Nice. Now on to Warding Halo. It now has a custom counter in the bottom right of the HUD, which will show how much damage absorption you have left instead of just the percentage left as it was before. And now on to what's going to be the most controversial part of his change in Warding Halo. It now only blocks 90% of the damage taken. It will still block status effects and other procs, but it's down to 90. As to why, DE says, when considering Neja's revamped kit, he is excellent at mitigating enemy damage. Firewalker and Divine Spears offer great area slash crowd control. Blazing Chakram offers healing and self-sustain. And his outstanding movement can make a player harder target to hit. In this context, Warding Halo's 100% damage resistance was completely overshadowed by his other options. Why heal or CC when I never take any damage? With 90% damage resistance, Neja is still very capable of tanking, but encouraged to rely on his other tools to avoid getting overwhelmed. Taking minimal health damage allows for synergy with Blazing Chakram's health orbs, not to mention new modding avenues like Equilibrium, Health Conversion, and various Arcanes. The change also allows us to improve survivabilities in other ways, such as the increased health pool and major Warding Halo quality of life buffs listed below. When that is first listed, that got a lot of people in a bit of a tizzy. But they kind of failed to see the next points, which I'll go over and then I'll come back to this. So now the damage absorption invulnerability phase happens as soon as you activate the ability. And the cast animation is also sped up as well. 
This alone is is actually a pretty significant change. Also, his damage multiplier during that invulnerability phase is increased, and his absorption multiplier also scales with power strength now, which is good. And the final point of that is, when the health of the Warding Halo runs out, it will do an AoE uh, heat status effect and give you a short period of invulnerability. So you basically get two invulnerability phases, once when you cast and another when it goes off. So when taken in context with all these, the, the 90% is not bad, because if he, if he had those with the invulnerability phases, it would probably just be OP at this point. And if you played someone like Gera that had that 90% that you can get with uh, her number two, then you would know what it is like. Now, Grant, she's a little tankier, but this works, and I like it. Some people are going to just complain about it, and that's just going to be the way things are, but I think it is an overall improvement in context with all the other enhancements that came with this ability, namely the increased cast speed and the invulnerability phases within that. For the last of the abilities, here's the Divine Spears changes. They sped up the casting slash slamming animations while removing the mandatory slam at the end of the spears duration, which could still be triggered manually. And hitting a spirit enemy with the blazing chakram produces a second chakram which fires at a nearby enemy. The biggest takeaway from this is the improvement to the animation speeds. It's just a lot more fluid and just seems a lot more sound, especially with considering how fast Nejo is supposed to be, so casting his abilities faster, including this one, certainly helps him a lot. They also gave Neja some more sounds from what they say the important moments like blazing chakrams returning to the player, awarding halos running out of health, and also there, there are different sounds for when you're hitting a speared enemy and when the spears expire and whatnot. So they also did some improvements to the blazing chakrams enemy tracking and testing it out it does seem to work a lot better bouncing between different enemies especially the ones you have speared and players will receive a hud icon indicating the health of a safeguard halo they received from neja well so far i like these changes i think the focus on making his abilities faster and tweaking them to be more team oriented help separate him from his, quote, lesser rhino stigma. Neja has always been about speed and being able to do better stuff faster just makes sense, and I will have to play with him more to see if this is enough to elevate him to the next level and be a frame that's more desired for harder missions. As it is now, I'm just going to continue playing with his sick-ass skin. Oh, which reminds me. I'm going to be doing some giveaways for his Empyrean set, so make sure to like and subscribe so you can get on the list for the set and for future giveaways. And let me know what you think of the Neja changes. Leave a comment below, I'll reply. So, thank you everyone for tuning in, and take care.